Third, we need to be brave enough to commit to big science on forests, climate change, and communities. Now, what do I mean by big science? Last year, the CGIAR Science Council commissioned a review of the state of the social sciences in the CG system. And suffice it to say that not all of the findings were flattering. Let me read you the paragraph that resonated with me. CGIAR social science today is plagued by too much small think. The CGIAR has a hard-earned reputation for micro-level studies in rural areas of developing countries, and it must continue excellence in that area. But it also needs to aggregate better to larger scale, more strategic issues concerning agricultural development at regional and global scale, both for strategic research prioritization and for policy analysis and advocacy. The present void at larger scale impedes the emergence of a culture of evidence-based agricultural research and rural policymaking in both public and private spheres, which hampers the pursuit of CGIR goals. The review team went on to recommend that the CGIR invest in a network of sentinel sites at which quantitative and qualitative research would take place over the long haul. Through the use of standardized methods for data collection and analysis, the sites would generate a metadata set sufficient to answer some of the big questions about the drivers of changes in land use, livelihoods, and governance. I'm quite sympathetic to both the review team's diagnosis and its prescription. And in fact, as mentioned yesterday by Tony Simons at ECRAF in the CPF subplenary, we and other CG centers are trying to address those challenges in a new research program under the CGIR consortium. It seems to me that one of the lessons from research on relationships between communities and forests has been that it has consistently proven worth it for our organizations to invest in ambitious global comparative studies. I think of the one undertaken earlier this decade on the livelihoods and non-timber forest products, the soon-to-be-ready Poverty and Environment Network data set, and the IFRI program mentioned earlier. But let's be clear how hard this is. Since no single organization has the capacity to do big science alone, it requires subsuming our narrow individual and institutional objectives to a collective effort. Next month, a group of policy research and advocacy organizations are getting together with help from the World Bank and FAO. Their objective is to agree on approaches and indicators for measuring governance conditions relevant to RED. And I commend such efforts to pool resources rather than to compete with each other. Big science also requires long, hard negotiations to standardize data collection and analysis methods and rules for managing and sharing the data. <clears throat> Many of you might have seen the article in the New York Times earlier this month describing how agreement on common methods and data sharing among Alzheimer's researchers had dramatically accelerated progress in understanding that disease. And if we are ever going to do big science, now is the time as climate change has generated political attention and associated funding opportunities as never before. At least based on C4's recent experience, being ambitious can create a positive feedback loop. Having big plans attracts research partners who want to be part of something significant. Having big plans also attracts interest from target audiences, both among policymakers and practitioners, especially in an era of payment for performance, we're finding that there's never been so much interest in our research results. And not least, an ambitious agenda attracts funding. With billions on the table for RED alone, it doesn't take much of a percentage dedicated to research to add up to real money. If we build it, they will come. Let me close with dispensing with the mountain climbing image and leave you with another one. As I was preparing this sermon, I struggled to think of a metaphor for the multiple tasks I'm proposing that we as forestry researchers and research organizations take on. Communicating to climate world, engaging with policymakers and project designers, launching big science, and doing them all at the same time. And last night at the welcoming reception, it came to me. All we have to do is dance, play the drum, and keep the streamers off the back of our hats doing circles in the air all at the same time. And I can't wait to see us try. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Francis. Now, I have two set of questions for you. The first question is from myself, and the second one I've tried to gather around the audience before this plenary session. Now, the first question from myself, how could Yufu help in supporting your vision about committing to big science on forest and climate change? Could you provide us with any ideas on how to move along with that? Thank you, Niels. I think the short answer is to keep doing what you're doing in the sense of providing platforms such as this one that allow for cross-fertilization across different communities, sub-communities of forest researchers. Those, for example, focus more on community management and those focus more on climate change. And I think that all of the mechanisms that the UFRO infrastructure provides and especially facilitating exchanges across them um, could easily help you know, get this subdiscipline going more quickly. Um, I also think that EUFRO has an important legitimizing role. EUFRO has a good brand name, and so by helping subgroups of us who are trying to get together to do big science, for example, both as a vehicle for us to communicate to the broader community and for you to help us understand what's going on elsewhere um, are both very important roles that EUFRO can play. Thank you, Francis. The second question, and I hope you understand, it's difficult for us to really have all 3,000 people come up on, this, on, on the scene here to put questions. So I try to gather questions from several of you. And some questions which I, I got during my gathering was that, questions like, do I also have to go to Forest Day 4, Francis? And, and what would be the major outcome? Uh, will there be a Forest Day 5th, 6th, and, and would there be a Forest Day for every year from now on and how long? Could, could you please help us give us some advice uh, before we are buying the ticket to come to Cancun, Mexico, December 5th? Thank you, Niels. Um, the first answer is that while you are indeed all welcome at Forest Day, you don't have to increase your carbon footprint to be there in person. Last year, we invested in streaming media over the internet, so you actually will be able to participate virtually from wherever you are, as long as you have connectivity. Um, I also don't want to overstress uh, Forest Day as a single event, and in fact, we've tried to replicate the success, for example, by having a Forest Day for Central Africa. And as we think ahead in collaboration with partners in the Collaborative Partnership on Forests about how to make best use of International Year of the Forests, we're thinking about you know, a series of smaller events connected to I other events already on the, the international calendar to have spe specific discussions about various forestry research agenda items. So yes, um, certainly welcome to be there. You don't have to be there. In terms of expected outcomes, um, we hope particularly in uh, Cancun, as I mentioned earlier, to showcase the experience of the region and take advantage of the, the proximity of, of a wealth of experience on community forestry there. And this year, as in other years, we're eager to make Forest Day relevant both to what is or is not going on in the nego negotiating rooms, but also in the, the community of practitioners. Will we keep doing Forest Day in perpetuity? I think the answer to that is we'll keep doing this as long as it's useful. And as long as there is a need for a platform, a big tent for the wider forestry community to come together and, and intersect with, with the climate community, we'll certainly do our part to support that conversation. Thank you. Thank you.